Welcome to the Craig Brock Real Estate Show, helping you navigate through all the challenges and pitfalls related to real estate. Craig is San Diego's real estate investment strategist. And now, here's Craig Brock. Good morning, Southern California. Have you seen what Qualcomm is trading at? About $80 a share. Uh, it's really up there significantly. And uh, did you hear what uh, celebrity fund manager Bill Miller says? About Apple, he believes it's priced, it should be valued at about 700 to 750 a share. It's now somewhere around $600 a share. Uh, his entry point was about $300 a share. Uh, so this is certainly positive uh, for Apple by all means. You know, he's the fund manager that runs hot and cold, but when he runs hot, he really runs hot. Uh, yesterday, I mentioned uh, some news about Jeffrey Gunlack, which we'll get into in a moment. Uh, other news uh, that we're hearing about this week is uh, a Federal Reserve uh, member indicated that the Federal Reserve is going to have to taper the asset purchase much more significantly than expected because of the improving economy. Is that really true? Well, did you know that there's actually a shortage of bonds out there? That's right. Uh, the the uh, bonds. There's been so many bonds purchased by the federal government that there's simply not enough available for the institutional investors. We've seen the yield come down to the low of the of the year. There were some also some comments out about uh, interest rates and what's happened since July of 2013. Many believe that we should have never seen a three print on the 10-year Treasury. I certainly agree with that. Uh, this uh, indicator is from many people in corporate America, including the uh, CEO at Home Depot, and certainly he knows a lot about housing. Uh, but to, back to the story about uh, Jeffrey Gunlack, a name that uh, certainly you've heard here in the Southland, uh, CEO of Double Line Capital out of, out of Los Angeles, uh, the bond guru. Basically, he runs head-to-head -head with uh, Bill Gross at PIMCO. Uh, Jeffrey Gunlack's actually doing better with his returns over the last year than PIMCO. He blames the government and the banks uh, for not doing enough uh, for housing. And I have to agree with him. I don't believe that the Fed is doing enough about housing. Uh, he has uh, concerns about this economy. But then you look at some markets, some micro markets, and you see multiple offers on particular properties. You wonder where the concern would be, but you really have to look at the big picture. And that's why we want to reach out this morning to Terry Lewis, uh, who we had on yesterday's program with Seller Finance Consultants, uh, to let us know basically what is the scenario out there. I was looking at a map of foreclosures right near my office late yesterday. I call it a heat map. And I found million-dollar properties that are going through the foreclosure process right now. There's about five of them that are within a stone throw of my office. These people are going to lose their house even if they file bankruptcy. And I have to warn you, even bankruptcy is not going to help out if you owe more than a million dollars encumbrance on your property because your bankruptcy filing will be completely thrown out, at least on a Chapter 7 basis, because... Uh, chapter 7 bankruptcy isn't going to do any good in this particular case. And let's face it, you eventually lose the property anyhow. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Lewis. Thanks for joining us here on Financial News and Talk. Good morning, Craig. Yeah, um, how are you this morning? Well, I'm doing okay, but it looks like a handful of people near my office are not doing okay because their homes are going through the foreclosure process as we speak. And I'm not even talking about uh, Oceanside where there's – it looks like a Christmas tree up there right now with the notice of defaults, properties that are going through notice of sale and others that are already bank-owned. You wonder what the bank's doing. The bank owns about 100 properties right now in Oceanside that are not on the market. I'm looking at properties here near my office in Encinitas, and I'm surprised at the number of luxury properties that are in foreclosure. Yeah, well, you, you mentioned in your opening about five or six different things that are wrong with the economy. And if you just step back and take a global view, you can see how anemic things are um, on any given um, subject matter. And so, you know, you talked about the bond market with uh, Jeffrey Gunlack and um, the government is basically on uh, – let's, let's just take uh, Fannie Freddie – uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac who buy mortgage-backed securities and that's really the marketplace for most of the home loans nowadays. They are actually, um, with their increased insurance premiums, are actually siphoning off 
profits now. Um, both those entities used to be public. Now they're semi. They're now they're. Or, I'm sorry. They used to be. Yeah, they used to be public. Now they're owned by the government. They're actually set, siphoned off. I think uh, what I heard earlier last week was fifty-two billion dollars worth of profits, and so it's 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 that type of thing that um, they're ta- and Fannie and Freddie are are a middle America type home home loan program that are preventing homeowners from actually getting into a home, and that's just one one little slice of it. Now. Um, uh, foreclosure starts are down to one percent now. Um, I just read, and um, but but that doesn't address the issue of all the underwater homes. I just read an article um, this morning that um, one in three homes are actually underwater, and uh, that's a that's a big problem, and that's across America. Now, so, can you quantify, uh, Terry? Can you quantify what you mean by underwater uh, for listeners that maybe are tuning in for the first time? We've been talking about that for quite a while here on on this broadcast. People that should take advantage of President Obama's home affordable refinance program. But let's face it, that program has been out for over two years now. If you haven't taken advantage of it by now, you're probably not going to take advantage of it. But underwater is a scenario where you owe more on your property than it's worth. But you have kind of an esoteric view of this. Uh, your meaning is is even, is even worse uh, for some people. Well, the definition of underwater given by this article is any home that is at 80 percent or more um, uh, the loan to value is more than eighty percent. So, and and the reason why they say eighty percent because that's twenty percent down is a is the starting point for a homeowner to buy a home. Anything more than that, um, the costs of of selling and buying another home and um, you know eats up that other twenty percent or most of it. So anybody that's o- over a loan to value of eighty percent is is probably looking at not having any equity by the time they were to sell and potentially buy another home and so so that's and, and this is really significant. This is one in three homeowners in America whose homes are not going to be on the market and and that's just just really significant. so the only way out is through appreciation or paying down an amortized mortgage. You know, over time, which is this, we're going to be in this for a long time to come. Well, yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, now, that's even with skewing this with about forty-two percent of buyers purchasing with cash, which uh, which is surprising. And then, if you look at across America, uh, there are some markets where even more than that is purchased with cash. For example, there's a there's a part in the Orange County, a section in the Orange County marketplace. A new home uh, development where an astounding 80% of the homes are being purchased in this development, and we're at about a $800,000 price point on this particular project that I'm talking about. 80% of the homes are purchased with cash. So even when you throw that into the equation, you're still coming up with one in three homes that are effectively underwater. That doesn't sound good uh, for a recovering economy by any means. Maybe the yield on the 10-year Treasury is telling us something. It's come down quite measurably here over the last couple of weeks. Big pullback in mortgage rates. But, Terry, I don't see borrowers breaking down the doors at any banks. I don't see the phones ringing off the hook to refinance by any means. seems like we're at a point uh, in the economy where it's static. Yeah, well, they've these borrowers have realized that with the new underwriting guidelines in Dodd Frank that was implemented in January of this year, that um, it, it's just too difficult to get a loan. I, in fact, had a, a lender, a hard money lender, tell me that um, they're lending money out to consumers at ten percent um, on a seven-year uh, loan, and what the borrowers and they need thirty-five percent to p- uh, put down. And, and they feel that they don't care what the FICO score of, is of these borrowers. And they're actually saying that, they'll, that the homeowner is going to buy the house with 35% down, get into the home, and then worry about refinancing later because it's so difficult to, to close on a regular uh, loan. So 
And that brings me up to the what seller finance consultants does is we'll, we can actually um, lend on, or help a homeowner that's, that's upside down on their home sell it if they need to get out because that's a third of homeowners that, you know, they have children, they, you know, people pass away, people get divorced, people get married. And these are people whose lives have to move forward. So we can actually uh, do seller financing on an underwater home if it makes sense to the buyer and the seller. And the seller can actually come out with money or, or a cash flow in the process. Well, that's uh, that's certainly something I want to know more about. Uh, we're a quarter past the hour here on Financial News and Talk on this Bloomberg Network. I'm Craig Brock, a direct uh, mortgage banker. I can help you get back into a home if you've had a past foreclosure or short sale or bankruptcy or repossession or who knows, any any kind of a scenario. You could have been incarcerated. It doesn't matter. I want to hear from you. We'll actually help you improve your credit score. We have experts on our staff that can help you do that. What without having to go to an outside institution. Uh, this morning we're speaking to Terry Lewis with Seller Finance Consultants. He can help you get out of that underwater property. If you have a home, maybe it's a home that you reside in, perhaps it's an investment property that could be holding you back for qualifying for the mortgage, your next mortgage for your next property. There is a way out without perfecting a short sale. Let's face it, a lot of people that have gone through the short sale process regret it because it has trashed their credit uh, for many years. It's certainly not as bad as a foreclosure. With a foreclosure, you're done for seven years unless you want to take advantage of the FHA program. The FHA program's not a bad program to get into a home. The caveat there is that you have to own or occupy the property. You have to sign up for mortgage insurance. It's going to last for the life of the loan. That's 30 years in most cases. That means that you're going to be paying a premium of 1.35% of the loan amount for 30 years. No thanks. I, I'm not uh, excited to pay that by any means. FHA also has you paying an upfront mortgage insurance premium of 1.75%. And if you don't wish to pay it up front, it simply gets lumped on top of your loan. Sounds expensive. Well, it is. Uh, many of these APRs uh, that first time buyers are seeing are at 6%. Hard to imagine we have this recovery with FHA financing so expensive. Heck, it's almost there to, to the price of hard money financing that Terry's talking about. Not something I'm excited about, especially on a morning like this when you have conventional financing. It's at 4% uh, for 30 years. Uh, not at the 100-year low, but pretty darn close to it. And it seems like interest rates may be going lower this summer. We'll certainly keep our eyes on that. But Terry, I have to get back and ask you some questions about how I can get out of an underwater property. Uh, the key element here is that you're not going through a short sale. You're not going through a foreclosure. You have the strategies that listeners need to unload this property so they can move on with their life. Now, it's all done with proper documentation. It's done with a servicer that actually collects the payments from the new homeowner and pays the existing lien holder on the property. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, uh, basically the, the loan stays in, in the um, homeowner's, the, the seller's name and the, the buyer is purchasing the property and owns it. It's just uh, taking over the, the seller's loan and um, so it has to be properly disclosed. Um, Dot Frank created a a requirement in most cases where these loans, um, you used to be able to just go to escrow and 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 do do these seller financing transactions. Um, now their their uh, Dodd Frank Act requires a mortgage loan originator to disclose them to to the parties. It's so um, it's created a bureaucracy, and which is okay. Um, you know, it's a business model basically that we started or saw a need for, um, but it also gives a third party um, the ability to disclose to the buyer and the seller exactly what they're getting into and make sure ahead of time that that's what they're that that's what they're getting. Okay, so, so you you mentioned the word disclosure there. Now I, I need to ask you because it's on a lot of listeners' minds: is this uh, is this something that's legal and safe? There's no law against taking over somebody's loan, especially um, 
if it's disclosed properly that that everybody knows um, what what they're getting into now um, technically there's a due on sale clause on these loans um, the banks there's two different ways Fannie Mae has has written them up in in their clauses and one says that they may be accelerated and the other says that they will be the bottom line is these banks are in dire straits and they don't want to own homes so if the alternative is short selling your house or maybe having a more qualified person uh, buyer take over that loan um, they really have no choice but to let that qualified buyer take over that loan so they're they're not going to be accelerating that, that loan okay now you mentioned uh, a scenario that uh, you had a client that called your office the other day uh, it was a dentist and uh, this dentist has you know all these student loans i mean they're just burdened with student loans and they had to go out and buy a new vehicle but all of a sudden even with an income of uh, of well into the six digits you know one hundred fifty thousand dollars to find a home in the southland that they can qualify for with all that student debt can be difficult this is the solution is this seems crazy that a doctor would actually buy a house with this kind of a strategy. Yeah, that's another subject that came up. Um, I read an article again, another different article this morning that um, there's um, $1.2 trillion worth of student loan debt in the country right now. And it's um, a third of all um, – younger people millennials 18 to 31 are living with their parents and it, and basically what's happened with student loans is they've they've taken away the whole home the whole um entry market for uh buying homes for housing and um f and it's just devastating to the economy <clears throat> that a whole generation of of younger people can't qualify for a home loan and and again seller financing is the answer that I, I can't stress how seller financing is such a solution for buyers and sellers in these in these instances that people are having problems with now you mentioned earlier 30 percent down payment and uh, Terry I don't want to put down 30 percent that sounds like an excessive amount uh, that was referring to what the uh, private equity lenders are willing to do on uh, most of these deals that you're uncovering for us here in San Diego and Orange County and in, in Riverside, San Bernardino. They don't require anywhere near that kind of a down payment, correct? Yeah, when, when it comes to seller financing, um, it's what the buyer and the seller agree to. And, you know, if the seller um, is comfortable with a 10% down payment, I, I wouldn't probably – um, go any less than 10%. Um, you do need some skin in the game for a buyer. But um, you have – you can create anything that, that makes sense. You might have a buyer that just like this dentist, maybe they just came out of uh, dental school and, and they, they have a really good p potential. They're making really good income but have no savings. Um, you can create a transaction with seller financing where – they can pay maybe a lot more money on the on the payment or, or have a portion of of the payment apply towards the down payment over time it um the creativity that can be done with seller financing is just um um unmanage, unimaginable um you, it's it's up to your creativity on how to create a transaction well, some of the listeners are thinking about the exit strategy. Eventually, they have to exit. Uh, the way you exit is you refinance the property or you simply sell the property or maybe in some case you pay it off with cash. Uh, we actually were involved in a transaction here just recently. Now, certainly uh, past history is uh, not indicative of what we'll see going forward uh, by any means, but this individual was able to refinance this particular property they bought with a seller carry back in less than a year and use the new appraised value. Now here's the key. They were able to use this new appraised value, the property appreciated. So not only were they able to pay off the existing loan on the property, but they were actually able to get six they were actually able to get cash out because more than six months had passed. Now that's the key element is that you have to have six months seasoning on an ownership 
in order to be able to refinance it. Six months goes by really fast, and I'm not indicating that you can buy a house today and refinance it in six months, but you know it's uh, it's to be determined. We've seen property prices increase uh, double digit here in the Southland. Uh, the last report was uh, was 12 percent. So. In some markets, it's much higher than that. The possibility exists. But even if you look at a longer-term strategy and you think that you'll refinance in three or five years, there's a lot of likelihood that that will be the case. And in this particular case that I was involved in, the buyer of this particular property was actually able to get the cash out of it that they put in. So effectively now they have a conventional loan below 4%. And they're at 100% uh, financing on this property without having to go FHA, without having to pay mortgage insurance, without having to pay gift funds, without having to borrow from their 401k. It's a win-win strategy. And you have people that are looking for this that you can help, correct? I want to get your contact information out, Terry. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we we, um, keep talking. So um, our email is... Or our um, our contact or our, is uh, sellerfinanceconsultants.com, and our phone number is 619-786-5550. I get so excited talking, I forget to mark it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's quite all right, and it's sellerfinanceconsultants.com for all the information that you need if you'd like to get into one of these properties or if you have an underwater property, uh, a home that uh, is holding you back from moving on to your next property. Uh, Maybe you don't think of it as being an underwater property, but if you don't have 20% equity in the property, effectively it's upside down. You have negative equity. Uh, We're using some uh, slang terms here, underwater and upside down, but I think uh, listeners know what we're talking about. Uh, These are terms that have been heard enough over the last five years, and I tell you, one of the phrases that's been heard more than enough over the last five years is Dodd-Frank. We just can't seem to get away from these guys. We just had more regulation here. Uh, first quarter of 2014, uh, we're just not getting away. Uh, government doesn't seem to be doing anything but creating more regulation for toxic mortgages that don't even exist anymore. Is that why listeners need to know your strategy? Yes, actually, Dodd Frank passed in 2010, and I call it the Obamacare of finance because it's it it covers car loans, it covers stock market transactions, it even covers you know buying produce on on t- credit from a, a you know a wholesaler. It just stretches across the whole country, and uh, Title 14 of of the Dodd Frank Act is um, is where the um, where the housing uh, home loan market is regulated. So, I mean, there's, it's 800 pages and, um, and then regulation was created on top of that 800 pages and it's just out of control. It's Obamacare for finance. Well, Terry, we just have about a minute to go. Uh, I'm trying to find the care in that, though, and I can't find any care. At least with Obamacare, if you earn under uh, under eighty thousand dollars as a family of four, you can get your health insurance subsidized. Uh, so, I mean, that's a pretty good deal. But with this act, I don't think anybody's getting subsidized, except for maybe Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, as you indicated earlier. And it sounds like uh, money's being siphoned off the top of those entities. That's exactly right, it, and. It's created expense for for every industry that has to do with finance. It's it's an added layer of compliance, and unfortunately, or fortunately for us, it created a business model. But we're really here to help people and and navigate through it and make a compliant transaction and solve their problems. And so um, our our email address is uh, sellerfinanceconsultants.com and you can reach out to us anytime. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate your contribution this morning on this Bloomberg Network. Thank you. Absolutely. And I'm Craig Brock and certainly uh, I do have red tape uh, because I'm a lender, but I have a lot less red tape than Bank of America, Wells Fargo or Union Bank because I can take your loan right to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac without any overlays. We do our own underwriting here. We have our own staff of underwriters that will evaluate your 
individual situation, if you've had a foreclosure, a short sale, a bankruptcy, we want to hear from you. Most of the people that have applications on my desk right now have had credit challenges. I want to hear from you if you have derogatory credit, craigbrockmortgage.com on the web, craigbrockmortgage.com. Have a fantastic day.